that may not sound like that big of a deal, but it's a huge, huge deal. Let's talk about the skin barrier. I wanted to go through the skin barrier, talk a little bit about you know what it is, what it does, and then go through some do's and some don'ts. I have five do's, five don'ts. You know, you gotta put a number on these things. In the coming weeks, I'm gonna have some videos that are going to reference the skin barrier, and I just wanna make sure that everybody understands where we're coming from. So what exactly is the skin barrier? It's important to remember that the skin is made up of layers, of course. We have these main layers. We have the subcutaneous layer, which is our deep, deep layer. Then we have the middle layer, which is our dermis. And then we have this outer layer, which is our epidermis. Epi actually means over or upon. So our epidermis kind of is over the dermis. Now this epidermis is made up of four layers on our face. This outermost layer that we see is our stratum corneum. Now the way that you can picture the stratum corneum in your head is like a brick wall. You've probably heard this before, but essentially it is a wall of bricks. Those bricks in this case are called corneocytes. Those bricks form this little brick wall and the mortar that sits between the bricks is made up of ceramides and cholesterol and free fatty acids and it essentially seals in all the bricks and makes this water tight seal. It literally makes a barrier with this outer layer of skin of bricks and mortar. Skin cells and lipids make this just waterproof barrier. What happens when that barrier is compromised? Well, bad things can get in like allergens and good things can get out like water. Now that may not sound like that big of a deal, but it's a huge, huge deal because when we lose too much water, we end up with dehydrated hydrated skin, dry skin, flaky skin. We can have irritated red skin. It can be itchy. It can crack. It can also beget itself and get worse and worse and worse as the barrier is not repaired. So what can you do to keep your barrier intact? Here's the five things that you should be doing. The first thing that you should be doing is washing properly. That means that you should wash with lukewarm water, so not hot water, and you should be using a pH balanced cleanser. Super, super important because our skin naturally sits a little bit acidic, so on the pH scale. So what we want from our cleanser is something that kind of mimics where our skin is as far as the pH. So you wanna use not too hot of water and you wanna use a pH balanced cleanser. Now the second thing that you wanna do is you want to hydrate your skin. When I say hydrate, I mean look for ingredients that are like giving your skin a drink of water. Those are things like hyaluronic acid and sodium PCA, urea and panthenol. Those are all things that are going to give your skin a little drink of water. Now, the third thing that you need to do is you need to lock that in. Those things are able to escape if we don't seal them in. So we've given our skin a drink of water. Now we wanna put a moisturizer on that's gonna lock all of those humectants in. You wanna look for things in your moisturizer like ceramides and squalane. Those are things that can kind of form a film and help to just trap all of that drinks of water that we just gave our skin. Fourth thing that we wanna do is we wanna wear sunscreen. Now we know that the sun is not great for our skin. It can cause premature aging, certainly can lead to you know things like skin cancer hyperpigmentation you know all of those things but the other thing that the sun can do is it can degrade our barrier so we need to wear sunscreen so that we can protect ourselves because as we damage our barrier, the sun actually becomes even more of a foe. So we really, really want to make sure that we are wearing sun protection. Now, the last thing that I recommend that you do is that you get an antioxidant on board. That's a vitamin C or you know any kind of antioxidant, green tea. There are other things I will list in the description box, good things in all of these categories for you if you're not familiar. But antioxidants are important because number one, they're going to help to fight off oxidative stresses, pollutants, things like that. But they're also gonna help boost your sun protection. So they're gonna help give your sunscreen a little bit of a hand. They are the Robin to sunscreen's Batman. Okay, so antioxidants are a really, really good friend to sun protection, and they're a really, really good friend to a healthy barrier. 
what are the five things that we should not be doing? The things that are going to actually disrupt our barrier, mess with our bricks and our mortar. Number one is over exfoliation. So you do not want to be exfoliating your skin too often every week. I'm guilty of this in the past. I have definitely kind of gone gung ho with my alpha hydroxy acids. And the truth is more is not better when it comes to AHAs. So you really want to, you know, a couple times a week, use your alpha hydroxy acids. And certainly if you notice that your barrier is impaired, if you're getting dry and flaky and red, you just want to back off the exfoliants altogether. Now, harsh scrubs are something that you really want to use sparingly, if ever. If you are somebody who enjoys a good manual scrub, that's okay. Just don't do it every single day because you're likely messing with your barrier. The second don't is starting actives or using actives too often. This mostly applies, in my opinion, to retinoids. So if you are going to start start off on a retinoid journey and it doesn't matter if it's retinol, retinaldehyde or retin-A. You want to start slow. Using it every single night to begin with is going to impair your barrier. It's going to make you feel dry, flaky, tight and red. You're going to want to quit the retinoid, which that means you'll never get the benefits of the retinoid, but also you're going to have a mess to clean up with your barrier. So you really really want to start off slow. The next don't is don't use a steamer, a mist, any kind of thing where you put water on your skin without adding a humectant like hyaluronic acid or sodium PCA or beta glucan or urea and following that up with a moisturizer. The next thing is don't overwash your skin. Now I know I kind of touched on this, but if you wash your skin too often in a day, you can actually mess with your barrier. And the last one is don't combine too many active ingredients all at once. This is really, really important. We are in a moment where we all want to fix our skin. We want it to look the best. We want to get rid of the hyperpigmentation. We want to combat fine lines and wrinkles. We want to get rid of our acne. So we throw everything in the kitchen sink at our skin. The problem with that is it disrupts our barrier. When our barrier is not functioning properly, none of that stuff is going to actually work. So it's super, super important not to combine your glycolic acid and your retinoids or not to add benzoyl peroxide and then a retin if you have acne, just really think about if you are somebody who ever gets red, tight, dry, you know, flaky, any of that stuff, back off of the actives. Super duper important. Okay, so what are you going to do if you're already there? You already have the red, the flaky, all of that stuff. You need a rescue. You're past it. You can't prevent it now because you're already there. Drop down to just one cleanse a day. That's at night before you go to bed so that you can put on all of your nighttime skincare. When you wake up in the morning, don't wash your face again. You don't need to wash your face again. And if you are trying to repair your skin, if you are in that moment where you are flaky and dry and tight and you're in pain, don't wash your skin again in the morning. Just don't do it. Second thing that you should stop doing is you should stop exfoliating. If you are having any trouble with your skin in your barrier and you have any of those symptoms I just listed, just step away from the retinoids, from the alpha hydroxy acid, certainly from salicylic acid, and give your skin a break and time to repair itself. The third thing is to hydrate your skin, but only if you're going to use an inclusive moisturizer over it. I am going to put in the description box a kind of a rescue regimen that may help. There are a few moisturizers out there that are truly made to be a rescue product. They're not elegant enough to use during the day, but to use them overnight over some humectants really, really can rescue skin. Most of them include things like Sika, which is Centella Asiatica. So they're very, very soothing as well. And they can make a profound difference. As much as you may want to get rid of the flakes and scrub them off, don't do that. No scrubs, no alpha hydroxy acids. The best thing that you can do if you really, really want to get rid of the flakes or driving you crazy is an enzyme mask. That is the kind of mask that's going to gently digest some of the dead flakes, but it's not going to really go after, you know, the skin that's trying to repair and get better. So only use enzymes for getting rid of the flakes, no washcloths, no scrubs, no alpha hydroxy acids, none of that stuff. Because what you're doing when you do that kind of thing is you're just kind of continuing the cycle. You, the barrier is never going to fully repair. So you're going to continue to flake. You're going to continue to feel, you know, itchy and tight and dry 
dry and red and you're not going to get past it. So you actually have to step away from anything that's gonna kind of alleviate the symptoms. And I understand we all wanna get rid of the flakes. The best way to do that is with an enzyme. I'm gonna list in the description box an enzyme mask I've talked about for years now and it is definitely my favorite. I love it for after post-treatment, but I also love it when the, the barrier is impaired because it's super, super gentle, but it does help with the flakes and it won't continue to damage the barrier. Now, the last thing is wear your sunscreen. It is super, super important. If your barrier is impaired, then you are more susceptible to damage. You are more susceptible to hyperpigmentation. You're certainly more susceptible to things like potential skin cancers, etc. So sunscreen, is really a sunblock. It is a tool that is super, super important when your barrier is, you know, compromised. But the other thing is it's kind of providing cover, giving the skin underneath it time to heal, giving that skin time to fix itself because the skin is the most amazing organ and it can fix itself, but we have to basically provide cover for it. And that is our sunscreen. Just know that if you really give your skin a break for a solid week or so, you should start to see improvement. And once you get your barrier, you're intact, try and follow those do's and those don'ts so that you don't wind up back with a damaged barrier. I think having this foundation, this understanding of the skin barrier is going to be really, really helpful in the coming weeks when we talk about the things that we purposely use to get past that barrier. Because there are things that we want to get in, but selectively. We only want to get some things in that we want to put in. I hope that this was helpful. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.